The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Quite a day yesterday. Following up Fed Day, we had some remarks from Treasury Secretary Yellen yesterday. The implicit versus explicit guarantee of deposits, not quite... Um, maybe as implicit as we thought. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. We got a little bit of cloud yesterday. We got a quarter basis point hike and you got an S&P that traded down 100 points from where we were, folks. You trade down about a percent and a half in the S&P on the day, but boy, we were higher. We were higher in terms of almost being higher by a percent on that number up to 4,073.73. And boy, you drop out of bed, you trade higher overnight. We got the Bank of England going up by 25 basis points. So you got Bank of England goes up 25 basis points. We go up 25 basis points. The ECB goes up 50 basis points. And boy, uh, things continue. This morning, First Republic, yesterday's action, man, you accelerate from 1650 down to 13. You just back things up a couple days, man. Last couple days, it has not been a nice afternoon. Tuesday afternoon, you traded from 19 down to 13 shortly after the close. Today, we're up by about 60 or 70 pennies. You get the Dow in negative territory right now. The market just rolling over a bit. Just checking in on everything right now, right? We make a low at about 6.30 in the morning of 32,240 in the Dow. You trade up 100 points. We're back down to that level, barely in the green right now. And the Russell, you talk about a drop-off, man. The Russell was almost at 1,800 yesterday. You close out the day at 17.40. We were just back down at that level, 17.40. Right now, you're trading at 17.47. How about the crude contract? From 64 bucks on Monday, we're sitting above $70, $70.53. Gold surging higher yet again, up to 19.80 last night. You're down to set in 1974, and we jump to notes and bonds. Yesterday's action, man, you talk about an acceleration. The 10-year trades from a price point of 113.26, and you close out. Now, that was early, early at about 8, 9 in the morning. 113.26, you close out the day at 115.16. My goodness, you got the 10-year right now. 3.5%, we'll call it the yield on the 10-year treasury. 3.5%, the 30-year. Goes from about 129.08 to almost 132. You're trading at 130.25 right now. We jump over to the volatility index. Spikes yesterday, but all things considered, right? Look at that VIX, man. Nothing like what we were seeing. And meanwhile, the S&P folks, keep in mind, the S&P traded down 100 points from where it was at the highs yesterday. And you're seeing a VIX locked in between about 20 and 22, potentially. We're at 21.42 so far this morning. We jump around to some of the currencies. Huge moves in notes and bonds. You're going to see some action in the currencies when that's happening. Of course, you got the dollar index going from 103 and change yesterday. You actually got a 101 handle overnight in the dollar index. You're back to 102.40, we'll call it. As I'm jumping around here, one second for me, folks. All right. Okay, and we jump over to the euro. Anytime you get them central bank action you're going to see some volatility of course yesterday there's your volatility a little bit this morning we jump over to the pound pound us dollar and there's some action as they hike by 25 basis points as well all right so where do we kick things off man well we got a few spots we can do it uh and we're going to kick things off with no come on there we go uh fed walks tightrope between inflation and bank turmoil but for how long I was talking to my dad yesterday after the program. We were just talking about the market, talking about the chairman's press conference. Uh, and he was making the point. He made it on the show last night. You know, he had said if, if this banking crisis does not tighten the economy sufficiently, and I'm adding a few words, I'm paraphrasing, right? But if it doesn't tighten, then the, the Fed will do the tightening for him. The tightening's coming, folks, okay? And what I got out of that press conference is, and I think what a lot of people got, and it's what we expected going into that press conference. It's very difficult to tell right now the impact that 
this banking crisis is having is going to have on the broader economy. Very difficult. Uh, Chairman Powell did not seem very confident in terms of how that would play out, the impact it would have, what kind of, you know, if you say, is this akin to a 25 basis point cut? Is it akin to a 50 basis point cut? Nobody knows, folks. Nobody knows. If this is just contained to a few Silicon Valley banks, a few regional banks, and everybody gets their money back, that probably shouldn't have systematic risk. But you got Credit Suisse going down, okay? Things are going to tighten up. Capital requirements are going to be in focus as regulators look at what's happening here. That is going to tighten things up. But boy, folks, we are at a time of generational inflation. And if we go higher for longer to the turn of two years, I mean, we're getting data. We got weekly jobless claims this morning yet again. What was it, 191,000? <whistles> Watch out, man. Watch out for sure. Okay, let's jump around to some of the equities moving this morning. Mr. Jack Dorsey moved on from Twitter, but boy, his equity still has some problems over at Square. Block. Uh, Hindenburg out with a note saying that they're facilitating criminal behavior, I believe, is the deal. And boy, you talk about a drop off now. Now, now this is the same shorting firm that just came after, what, Adani? Is that how you pronounce it? Um, Asia's wealthiest man tanked his shares. They're still dealing with woes. But boy, you talk about a drop off, man. I haven't read the report. I've just seen the highlight, the um, headlines. But there's your headline. Block shares plunge after Hindenburg says Jack Dorsey's company facilitates fraud is the headline there. Yeah, they've targeted other ones. There it is, the Adani Group. The company's flagship cash app facilitates crime and lacks strong compliance controls. Yeah, be interesting to see how that one plays out. But guess what? Investors today, after seeing what happened with Adani, I think, probably playing into that. Yeah, you go from 74 down to 58 What's that, $16? Well, right now, let's be fair. Right now, you closed at 72, you're trading at 61, so you're down $11, you're down 15% for Square. That's going to be an interesting one to see how that plays out. Let's check around to some of the FANG stocks this morning. You got Apple shares. That's going to give the NASDAQ a lift, man, with Apple up almost $2. Apple's got $16 billion, folks. Boom, just like that. They add $32 billion to their market cap overnight in a pretty calm evening. Evening. Microsoft shares. Yeah, this NASDAQ, man. Look at Microsoft. I mean, look at this, right? So much for the market sell-off, man. Microsoft is above where you were trading at any part this week, going back to Monday. Microsoft up another $4 this morning. Right now, you jump over to Google shares. Alphabet up a dollar so far. We jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla up another $4. Look at this action, man. Let's check out some of the chip, stock, chip stocks. NVIDIA shares up 7 bucks. Man, it's everywhere. Let's check out some of the big banks. JP Morgan up barely. Bank of America up barely. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting open, to say the least, man. To say the least. We'll see where we go. All right, let's see what else I had pulled up here as we come into the first break. We're going to be talking to our man Kevin Hinks coming up after the break, and we'll talk a little bit of earnings. One of the equities they talked about on their program yesterday, out with their numbers, Olive Garden. Darden Restaurants raised its revenue outlook for fiscal 2023 for the second consecutive quarter. Net sales. Almost $2.8 billion. How about this one, right? Same store sales growth, 11.7% across all of its brands. Inflation, folks, okay, right? Uh, Olive Garden, Longhorn Steakhouse, The Capitol Grill, Seasons 52, another great one. I've talked about it before. If you've never checked out a Seasons 52, folks, I don't own any darn restaurants, but they are a good restaurant. A little bit more health conscious, but still a uh, very classy establishment, some good food, and... Uh, there's your chart at Darden. Basically unchanged, a little bit lower. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back talking to our man, Kevin Hicks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P futures up by about 19 points right now. We were briefly over that 4,000 price point at about 5 a.m. Eastern time. We're up by 19 points right now. Trading in the S&Ps, you jump over to the NASDAQ. Boy, you talk about a move, man. From 13,082, and yeah, you're talking about almost 400 points. What was the low yesterday? Let's just zoom it in for a second. Did you get there? The low, 12,678. Eight. Yeah, you did. Absolutely remarkable on that market. And you got the Dow right now up by 53 points. Let's jump around to some of the other stories we got pulled up here. We talked about Darn Restaurants. And let's talk about the Bank of England. So there's the headline there you get from them. Bank of England hikes interest rates by 25 basis points after inflation surprise. Uh, yeah, how about their inflation, man? 10.4% in February, dealing with some inflation, to put it lightly, across the globe. All right, what other equities we have pulled up here? We're going to talk a little bit of Coinbase, man. Where's my Coinbase article? Oh, come on. Too much good stuff to talk about this morning. Oh, did I close it? Shame on me. Okay, I'll find it afterwards. We'll talk a little bit. Okay, let's talk a little bit of Bitcoin. Regardless, man, Bitcoin... Yesterday, trades from 29,000 down to 27 with the market, man. We popped to 27,500. You take a look at Ethereum right now. Pretty interesting action, to put it lightly, when you're talking about cryptos, man. Look at Ethereum, man. This year, 1,100 to 1,700, but there's nothing like Bitcoin right now. In the last week, you're up by almost 50%. From 20,000, you make a high of almost, yeah, you got a 29,000 handle. Pretty remarkable. Okay, let's jump into some of these other articles I had pulled up here, talking about Switzerland, right? Interesting read from the journal out here. Now, as I've mentioned, one of my best friends, probably my best friend, uh, lived with him for three years in college at Villanova. He went to work for, JP, uh, he's a Staten Island boy. Uh, got a job working for JP Morgan in Manhattan, 
was fortunate to get transferred over J.P. Morgan in Switzerland, where they have thousands of employees, or at least they did at the time. Visited him when he was working in Geneva. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country, to put it lightly. A little expensive, to put it um, lightly as well. Visited him for a week when he was over in Gina, uh, Geneva a while back. He ended up making the move to Zurich. He now works for... Thankfully, UBS, not Credit Suisse. But they're in a good position of strength. But, boy, it's a tough one, man. And he's been talking about it, you know, that the just the, the general hit on the reputational banking of Switzerland is a big deal and not good for the country. And he's got a daughter now that's going to be one in May. Um, he's getting married this year. And he's looking to become a citizen of Swiss, of Switzerland. He's learning German right now. Um, it's a very difficult process to become a citizen over there. Um, but he's been working over there for 10, 15 years, something like that. Nonetheless, right, they go through it here, folks. Boy, you go through it, man. I mean, yeah, they are a country that is basically a banking hub, as we all know. And now they used to just have two big banks. Now they have one big bank. Their reputation is banking. And what happens if that one big bank runs into trouble, as it did in 2008 when UBS needed a bailout? Uh, so that's kind of the structural hit that they do take there. Now you look at how big the banks are. And let me see if I can find the lines, man, because their balance sheet is insanely larger than the country's GDP. And I'll find the quote at the next break is what I'll do. And I know our man Kevin Hanks, he's usually on at 9.15. He's running around. He's a busy man this morning, folks. Um, but he will be coming up at Fast Market, coming up at 12 today. Yeah, I'll find that quote because it is pretty remarkable how big the banks are in terms of versus the country and the GDP and basically that they represent everything. I'll have to pull it up at the break, but nonetheless. Uh, ah, here it is. Okay, I found the Coinbase article. Thank you. SEC plans lawsuit against Coinbase. According to the exchange, regulators believe the U.S. crypto exchange violated investor protection laws. This is what they're coming them after them for. Coinbase said it received a letter from the SEC known as a Wells Notice. So regulars, regulators say they believe companies or individuals violated investor protection laws. Now, by warning Coinbase about the potential lawsuit, the SEC is setting its sights on one of the biggest names in crypto. The lawsuit would represent um, Gensler's biggest step into that jurisdiction over crypto. The notice concerns several aspects of Coinbase's business, including assets listed on its crypto exchange in its staking service, Coinbase Earn. That seems to be a big sticking point, right? The staking service and how they're kind of playing these things. And its wallet service, the company said, Coinbase Earn is a program that allows customers to earn rewards on their digital assets by staking. That is when crypto investors lock up their coins to facilitate transactions on the underlying blockchain network. We're prepared. It kind of sounds like that's what you do when you allow your shares to be loaned out to be sold short, right? Something to that degree in terms of you own the crypto, you're keeping it on Coinbase, you're allowing Coinbase to use that crypto while you keep it there. And for that, you get a slight return. It's not like banking with Thinkorswim or Fidelity or TD Ameritrade or any of those where your money is guaranteed to that degree, though, folks. That's probably the kick. Um, and, yeah, I've talked about it before, man. I would not have my money on Coinbase. And you're seeing it down. There you go, man. Uh, you talk about a hit. Wow. Wow. So you're going to be down $16. And you know what's interesting here, folks, is that I hadn't even pulled up the equity, okay? Uh, I was up about 6 o'clock, 6.30 this morning, hanging out with Tommy for a while, looking at the market. We're waking up. We're having coffee. I was reading the articles about Coinbase, this one and another one on CNBC. And what's so interesting is this stuff has become so common that I didn't even think to say, oh, man, I wonder what the stock is doing, right? Because there's so many headlines left and right that there's shenanigans going on in the crypto sector. And, yeah, it looks like maybe this one might matter. But guess what, man? All you're doing is you're back to last week's trading range on Coinbase. Now, Bitcoin's going up by 50% over that time. Okay, so keep that in context. Now, you want to talk about something, man? You back Coinbase up. Okay. They go public at the high of 429. You make it almost back up to that level. Not really, I guess, to 340. What was the high there? 368, we'll call it, in November. And what I'm going to make the case here is, if you want action, folks, 
go buy some Bitcoin if you want action. Don't buy some Coinbase, because look at what's happened to Coinbase, okay? Coinbase, you're gonna open at $60. Okay, that's basically, if you're a you know, chartist, you could say that's just the area. This has been consolidating between about 50 and 100. You're gonna open at 60 versus, now this chart goes back to, I'm gonna do the same thing for Bitcoin, okay? This chart goes back to April of 2021 now. If you've been following the markets, folks, you know when April of 2021 was. It was the high and then another high, which was the other high that we had on Coinbase's chart. Now, the point being, folks, Bitcoin is right back to where you were after that initial dip lower to where you were in June of 2021. Well, compare that to Coinbase, man. You bought Coinbase back there at 220. You're opening today at $60. If you bought Coinbase... Again, June, July, anywhere in the middle of that trough between the two highs in April and in November, if you bought it anywhere in there at about 220 to 250, you're at $60 today versus if you bought Bitcoin, you're almost even, right? So keep that in mind, folks. If you do want action, Bitcoin seems to be rising to the crop, man. Absolutely remarkable what's happened to FTX, all that stuff. And meanwhile, you have Bitcoin dramatically higher to 27,000 and yeah almost right back to where you were on those lows in the middle of 2021 stay tuned folks s&p's up by 21 we're coming back for the opening bell building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people they think it's too volatile and risky most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right but you're not most people are you at TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps. You open up about seven tenths in the positive, thirty nine ninety nine. The price point on that S&P right now, Nasdaq. You man, you talk about a surge. Nasdaq one hundred. You're up about one point two percent. We took a look at some of those tech stocks, right? All of them dramatically higher. Dow up one twenty seven. You get the Russell up by fifteen right now. Let's jump over to Apple. Apple up by nine tenths percent right now. We jump over to Microsoft shares up almost two percent right now. Google shares up almost two percent right now. Man, some big moves across the board. See how Tesla's trading up by two point five percent. Arc shares down 1%, quite a pullback for them yesterday, erased all the gains they got the day before. Yeah, remarkable action in this market as the S&P is just inch above 4,000 right now. You jump over to the SPY, SPY trading 395.64. Boy, you were up to like 402 yesterday, I think, in the SPY. Let's get the high print. We'll put it back to, yeah, you talk about a half hour, man. Uh, it was the half hour now. No, it was the, it was the half hour chart. There we go. Um, yeah, you talk about a bar, right? From 399 to 392 in the span of one 30-minute bar, you jump back to the S&P. That bar takes you from 4,040 down to 3,970. You put things on an hourly chart, and yeah, you got a bar that takes you from 4,050 to 3,970, man. Just a crazy hour in the final day as things really shifted from a little bit of exuberance up to 4,070. Now, Let's check out the Fibonacci numbers in terms of where we're going, right? 382, you're talking about 4,007. You make it all the way back up to 4,032, man. You're talking about the 618, and that would be an interesting one because that would get you all the way back to prior to the press conference, folks, coming into Chairman Powell at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And, yeah, so if you're looking for a short, there's your couple Fibonacci areas you can put on your chart. And what I'm going to do real quick to take a look, okay, let's back this up. And I'm going to back up the SPY real quick. I'm going to show you, man, some of these Fibonacci's, man, right? I got this up here in terms of on the chart, the 618. Patience is the name of the game sometimes, folks. And you can scale into trades, okay? That's that's what, in this type of a market, folks, excuse me, where you're getting 100-point swings in the S&P, right? Especially on Fed Day, excuse me. You're getting 10-point swings in the SPY. Folks, that's 2.5%. That market moved in the final two hours of yesterday, and that doesn't even include 1% up, 2.5% down in the span of the final two hours of trading yesterday. Uh, very difficult to pinpoint the exact range. Nothing wrong with scaling into trades if you do, but if you had the patience to wait for it, man, you back things up, and you got to go back to the high of February 14th, okay? This is just a four-hour chart. Let's put it on a daily for a little bit of clarity here. You back it up to the high, you could make the case that's really where the slide began to negative prices. February 14th, the SPY. Now, the SPY is a little bit different than the futures, okay, because we've had some pretty big tails prior to the market open or after the market close overnight on the S&P futures where it gets a little different. Again, no magic science, folks. You look at everything you have, you make the decisions you have. That's why some of the areas are a little bit different in terms of maybe the areas you're choosing if you're choosing to scale in. But boy, you look at this chart, man. From the highs of February 14th down to the lows of March 13th, 401.95 was the 618, and we got to 402.49 yesterday, and you only got there for a brief moment, folks, right? I mean, check that out. These are minute bars we're talking about. I'm zooming in on the action, and for a period of about five or six minutes, you were above that 618, and that's not a small one. Remember the run that we had in February, right? Look at this chart we're talking about here when you go back. That's basically the pullback that gave back all we got this year. And then what did we do? We bounced a 618. And boy, if you're ever doing an A to B, C to D leg here, folks, okay, you're talking about an A point of 415. You're talking about a B point of 380. What's that? About 35 is your A to B leg. You get up to a high of about 402. 49, what's, what's that put you, 367.50, 367.50, that would bring you down to in the S&Ps and 367.50 on this chart, somewhere into the bottom range that we were at in October, right? You make it all the way down to 348, and recall, the S&Ps have a show of 348, but on October 13th, I believe we were dramatically lower pre-market was the case as well, so you got a different spike on the S&P futures risk, the SPY, but not outlandish. Right? What did I just say? 363? Yeah, 36750. 36750. Look at where that ends up on that chart. You're coming back to test some of the lows of October. You're coming back to test the low of June, 36217. Uh, and boy, yesterday we moved 10 points. So don't tell me we can't get 
what, 27 points from where we are at some point in the near future as the market sits right at 4,000. You talk about a, a, a round number, our man Basil Chapman. Pre appreciate Basil doing the program live from 8 till 9. This morning, if you didn't get a chance to check it out, folks, Basil did a show 8 till 9. We'll be playing that coming up right after my program. So pretty current. The market's right where it was coming into the opening bell when Basil did his program live from 8 till 9. Now, I mentioned, so there's your spy, okay? And Basil's done some great work, man. He was talking to my dad earlier this week, and they were talking about the NASDAQ versus the SPY versus the Dow. Basil's had a couple great trades in the Dow and how the NASDAQ's actually the leader right now. It's continuing today. I mean, look at it, right? And he was saying... And it's playing out. If you haven't tried out Basil's opening call, folks, yet, please try it out. Great service. You Anything we do at TFNN, you get it free for 30 days, essentially, because there's nothing to risk. You got to pay on day one, okay? Because what we notice, folks, is if you give out free trials without making people pay on day one, you actually don't care about it. and You don't pay attention most of the time. So it's the same exact thing. We sign you up. You pay on day one. It kind of incentivizes you to pay to that degree and um, excuse me to pay attention to that degree and then if you don't like it you just cancel pretty simple action as it goes forward but taking a look at the futures okay what's so interesting is when you go back to february 14th which is the day i was just doing on the spy you take the fibonacci number you go down to the tail and this is what i'm talking about here with scaling okay so which one's correct folks if you're talking about the 618 is the 4,053 price point correct? Well, you can make the case that it's correct, right? That's a nice area that you hit in March. It's also an area that you got up to yesterday. And this is where you can choose a couple levels, okay? Now, I was looking at 4,053 on the futures. I knew there was a potential for large moves yesterday, okay? And the SPY got you above that level because you got all the way up to 4,073. So there was about 20 points higher than when you look at the SPY. Right, you just touched that number at 401.95, you got up to 402.49. But don't think you have to cherry pick the exact spot, man. You're getting in for an options contract, maybe you buy one at 4,053, and if you're adventurous enough, maybe you get a second one when it hits the SPY one. That's how I'm approaching this market right now because the swings, and listen, you gotta put stops in though, okay? Don't just scale all the way, because you scale all the way and, and you're wrong, Boy, yesterday, uh, yesterday, you do that on the bullish side, man, you're gone <laughs> to the tune of 100 S&P points. So it's a double-edged sword, okay? You got to have a plan. Pick a point on the chart that you put your stops in. That's it. You got to do it, man, because you want to be alive for the next time the market moves 100 points, folks, okay? You want to have some capital to stay in this game because we have some volatility going on and I imagine it's gonna persist for a while. You think the Fed dot plot is gonna go out for two years in terms of higher for longer and we're not gonna have volatility as we're dealing with higher rates to tame inflation for the next two years? I think the market woke up to that a little bit. We'll talk a little bit of banks when we get back. Let's check out First Republic. Up 4% today, but the day is young as our man Basil says. Stay tuned folks, we'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We've got the S&P sitting right under that 4,000 price point. We got right back to where we were at about 4.50 a.m. Eastern time. And again, I'm going to back this off a bit right now. Uh, if you're looking for Fibonacci areas from yesterday's acceleration, folks, the 382 brings you to about 4,007. The 618, I've been saying there are 618s everywhere in this market, man. That's that's what I'm trying to stick to. It seems to be working. Um and then maybe that's just how the market's moving. And it's just the swings are so big that the 382 isn't getting it done, man. The 618 is what is vogue right now because the moves are just so large in both directions. And yeah, you get up to a price point of 4,032, 4,033, something like that. Backing things up a little bit further. You back things up to the high of last Friday. That was just above, yeah, 4,009. So we're coming into that level. You back things up to early Tuesday. Yeah, that's the high from early Tuesday, about 4,032. Now, remember, you finished that day at about 4,043. You charged higher Wednesday into the Federal Reserve meeting. Very interesting you went to that Federal Reserve meeting. It's almost optimism um, at peak highs as this market catching a bid. You're now up to basically the 382. What did we just get to? You just got to 4,725, man. On my chart, we're at 4,747. So we'll see how we do right now. Back to a five-minute chart as you're back to the 382 of yesterday's move. Just that quick. Let's see how the VIX is trading right now. I mean, remarkable, that VIX, right? Sucking out all that volatility premium as you're right back to where you were beginning of day yesterday. Meanwhile, we had a 100-point sell-off in between. All right, let's talk a little bit of banks. Let's take a look at First Republic. Up 5.4%. But folks, what do I always say? Percentages on small numbers can be deceiving because does it look like that chart has any up, any up on it? You, you even got a red day today when you're up by 5.5%, even on a daily basis, down from 120, down from 173. That's just going back. You back it up even further, man, down from 222 at the end of 2021. And yeah, so they get another downgrade by Fitch amid a cash crunch. The balance sheet is not sustainable. I don't think First Republic's sustainable, man. You're in the news as a failing bank for weeks on end, and you got the big banks putting in $30 billion, and it doesn't even blink. The market trades you down to the tune of 50% the next day. Are you putting your money in First Republic tomorrow? Who is opening an account at First Republic tomorrow, let alone ever risking more than – are you showing up at First Republic Bank with a million-dollar check to open a checking account tomorrow? You get the point. Not even close, right? So they get a downgrade. Uh, now, some of the interesting parts in terms of what they talk about here is saying that, well, while they just received that $30 billion, the bank's new funding profile 
is relatively costly, which I, what I like about this is this is getting into even further. If you don't think this thing's about to fail in the next few days, well, let's just look at the actual fundamentals of this company, First Republic, and their ability to exist as a business going forward. The bank's new funding profile is relatively costly, and it's viewed as the primary ratings constraint. Okay, It's currently operating at a loss. That is not sustainable over the longer term, absent a balance sheet restructuring. Here's the kicker, though. The requirement to repay the $30 billion that they just got from the 11 banks at the end of its term will pose a challenge for the troubled lender. Like other U.S. banks, the fair market value of First Republic securities and loans has fallen below book values, meaning any asset sales would likely require a significant recapitalization. The bank's long-duration municipal securities and residential mortgage loans holdings also raise capital concerns. Yeah. They got some big problems, man, in a big way. Exactly. You want your free toaster, man, to go with your million-dollar deposit? Well, good luck. It better be one heck of a toaster because that might be all you end up with uh, as they give it back even as I keep talking, right? You were just at 1460 man. You just gave up a dollar in the span of 10 minutes on the open uh, even as this market charges higher to the 3A2 line of those S&Ps. Let's see how the Nasdaq's doing in terms of Fibonacci numbers where we're at. We'll take an area near the top of yesterday. We'll take an area near the bottom. The NASDAQ through the 50%, the 618 of the NASDAQ 100, 12,925. Keep your eye on that one. All right, what else do we got pulled up here? Let's see. Oh, we got to talk about this one. Yeah. So TikTok CEO, he is going to be in front of the house today. And yeah, I think they're gone, man. I don't know how it happens. And and it's, it's good to see politicians finally agreeing um, on something, and this seems like an easy one, man, because no matter what they say, if a company's owned by China, folks, you know the deal, okay? And that's the deal, and if they want the data, they're going to get it. You're going to see the CEO of TikTok, which is owned by ByteDance, come in front of Congress today, and he's going to say, his remarks are already out there, he has not had a request to share data with the Chinese government, and if he gets one, he will not even do that. Do you believe that? I don't think that China would, I mean... This is the same country that just like locked up Jack Ma and they still got the other guy out there, right? From Renaissance or something like that. Um, whatever that company was, the, the, the executive just disappeared a month ago. So they either have to sell, divest, get that company out of China's hands. And then, or they're gonna get kicked up. They're not gonna do that. The Chinese government just wouldn't do that. I don't think they're gonna cow to such a demand, even though I see such a demand as being very reasonable. Um, I don't even think TikTok, I heard this this morning, that TikTok is actually not even allowed in China. <laughs> yeah. So they know, you know, what is going on in terms of they don't even allow it in their own country. Meanwhile, it's just proliferating across the U.S. Um, and social media in general, folks, all the studies that come out, if you have kids in the house, listen, I talk about screen time all the time. It's so important. There's good screen time and there's bad screen time. Um, I have kids in my household that are two, five and 16. Okay. And you just see the strain, especially on teenagers. You get into that, man, the social media, the phone, living on your phone, make sure you get those kids off their phone. I was reading a great article a couple weeks ago, just talking about it seems impossible in the moment because everything's electronic and teenagers especially are tied to their phones. Uh, but you just got to do it and many parents do and it is something you can do and you just set you set limits, okay? It's not a binary choice that you say you can't touch your phone, you can't watch a computer screen, you can't watch a television show. Uh, you set limits. One of those limits, maybe you don't let the kids bring the phone into the room. Right. Maybe they bring it because, you know, kids, they just want to sit in their room and play on their phone these days. Hey, I used to sit in my room and play video games. Right. Every generation does it to some degree, at least as they become available, man. Uh, but, yeah, you're seeing a surge and it's probably accurate because I imagine that they're gone or they're hampered in a pretty dramatic way. But I just can't see China selling that, man. I mean, you think about the goals China wants long term. Right. They own the most prolific data collecting application the world might have ever seen outside of Facebook, right? And you think that they're just going to give it up because Biden says so? I mean, that's that's the one that I'm trying to compound in my head, right? How that would happen. So he's going to be in front of Congress today, man. That's what he's going to say. The remarks were already out. He's going to say 
they don't get the data, even if they ask, I won't give it to them. And hopefully all of our politicians say, I don't believe you, because that's not how it works when you're working with China, folks. I mean, I don't know how you roll that one off um, with a straight face to say that. But nonetheless, Snapchat, you're up 7% today. Meta shares up by 2.5% today, right? Big numbers. Let's see how Square is trading on block, I should say. 20.1%. Uh, they may have a problem, folks. Yeah, to put it lightly. Let's see how the banks are trading right now. They get a lift. JP Morgan up 1.7%. Here we go. Bank of America up 1.5%. Citi up by 1.4%. Credit Suisse still trading at 90 pennies. Not bad. All right, folks, one more segment. S&P holding on to game, sitting at that 382, 4,004. We're only 20 minutes in the day, trading day. One more segment, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Hopefully you had me last segment, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, jumping around real quick as we wrap it up. The S&P's right now, you're up by 34 points, just chopping around, 4,005. We'll see where we go as we've just been chopping basically since the open. NASDAQ 100, you're right at about the 50% level. So interesting, right? You got the S&P's right at the 382. You got the NASDAQ right at the 50%. And Dow, not so much. And that's one of the things that Basil's been talking about in terms of the Dow, really the laggard there. 
And let's just see what we're talking about for the Dow. No real bounce at all. The 382 will get you all the way up to 32,524. Still not even at that level just yet on the Dow. Okay, a couple other headlines I had pulled up here that I wanted to talk about real quickly. Apple, pretty interesting. Now, I just mentioned, right, Apple. Let's see how Apple's doing. They were up two bucks already. Yeah, they're up a buck 60 or 1%. Now, Apple, folks, they got 16 billion shares. So every dollar they trade is 16 billion in market cap. Spending a billion dollars a year isn't that big of a deal when their market cap fluctuates by 20 to 30 billion dollars any given day. And what they're going to do is they're going to have them in theaters as a way to basically market its streaming service, which is in turn, again, a way to essentially market their products. Um, not many people pay for Apple Plus by its own, and I'm sure many do. Ooh, excuse me, drinking a lot of coffee this morning. Um, but it comes free for a year with like any new tablet, right? Any new iPhone. So it's kind of like the ecosystem that you're buying into yet there. But nonetheless, a billion dollars a year, they're going to push them into movie theaters and the likes of they talk about. They have a Scorsese film coming out with Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, yeah, so they got a couple of films as they keep putting the pressure on. And then what else I want to talk about here? So this one's interesting from Bloomberg as we wrap it up here. This is the MLIV survey. Now, this is a market live survey on Bloomberg. Take it for what it's worth, okay? Um but pretty interesting to see where people think the Fed is going, okay, that they're not going to cut a majority until 2024. And I would agree with that one, to put it lightly, man. But boy, when you talk about where we are, folks, okay, swaps markets were pricing the Fed's benchmark to peak around 4.95% in May and then fall to about 4.2% in December. I don't know how we get the cuts by December that that market's talking about with where inflation is, folks, but we get to find out. Stay tuned, folks. Basil did his show at 8. He's coming up now. Live programming after that. Have a great Thursday, everybody.